three o'clock. The Revenue Forum is about to start. Thank you all for joining us. Revenue Forum is a non-profit initiative started by me in 2008. And currently we organize monthly webinars every first Thursday of the month. This is actually an exception. These we started recently in the wake of COVID-19. Half day seminars, uh, we do that in 10 cities in eight countries. Uh, we long to start again and get this, part, this, this period over with. Whole day events, the first one being held on the 18th of May next year. And this is a very unique event held simultaneously in Stockholm, Milan, London and online. More information on that in the end of this webinar. The topic of this webinar episode has, uh, is, uh, has revenue management changed forever? And we invited an expert panel to talk about the subject. Our expert panel consists of four expert speakers and myself, and we will each get five minutes to talk. We will use a Pacha Kucha format for this. This means that the presentation slides automatically change after 20 seconds. Furthermore, we will be joined by a special guest. This time we invited Aida Munoz from Hotel Investment Partners to, to, to give us her insights. We will interview her after our expert panel is finished with their pachacuchas. Participants to this webinar are a broad mix of listeners from all over the world with different types of restrictions uh, at this moment. There are mainly hotels ranging from two to five stars, independent and branded, so a very broad mix. We will try to make this coming hour inspirational for you all. Let's introduce the speakers, starting with the first speaker in line. Tell, tell, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, nice to meet everyone. So, I'm Tell Spages from um, OT Insight, and I will be speaking about uh, big data and how real time analytics can help to predict the future. And I'm Eric Munoz from Libra. Uh, it's quite obvious what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about how revenue management has changed, but also what to do about it and not to lose focus on the business that we're in. So I'm looking forward to hearing the other speakers and also learning more from what everyone has to share today. Hi everyone, I'm Hortensia from Ideas. And as the title is showing, I'm going to talk about how the revenue management is changing and has changed post COVID. I am looking forward to present my uh, my slides to you and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Niels uh, from Sendine. Uh, nice to meet everyone and it's great to be a part of this. Thank you very much for having me on Marie. Um, I'm going to be talking about how the role of the revenue manager is evolving um, post-COVID. And my name is Anna-Marie Gubanski and I'm part from the organizer behind the Revenue Forum. I am founder and CEO, CEO for Tacticom, which is a training and consultancy company specializing in revenue management and distribution. Today, I will try to convince you all that revenue management always has changed forever. I guess it's my time, Anne-Marie, yeah. Yes. All right, so Aida Muñoz here from, from Barcelona, Spain. Um, I'm the guest speaker, but it doesn't really uh, mean much than or much more than the other speakers, absolutely nothing. And we will be discussing about the, the same topic, the role of revenue management. So very glad for participating on this webinar, Anne-Marie. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to have you. Uh, and this is also a bit of a nervous moment for all speakers because this is also the first time that we are going to see each other's uh, presentations. And it's always, I mean, I'm the last speaker and it's always so that we might just like have taken away uh, uh, all the points that we are going to, uh, we're going to make. So uh, let's start maybe with the first speaker. Uh, see if we can get your presentation to work, Tell. Yeah, there you had. Uh, please tell. Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Anne Marie. So, so we can start. Um, so, first of all, uh, thank you everyone who joined this webinar. So, what does the future hold? Um, over the past few months, we heard a lot about the new normal. We are all asking ourselves when the hospitality landscape will stabilize and allow us to transact again. The subject that I will tackle is how we can use big data and real-time analytics to start forecasting market demand more accurately. Because when the markets are beginning, beginning to reopen, historical data will no longer be very reliable to plan forward. 
But first of all, the question that I want to answer, are we already leveraging big data? So when you look at the different phases of business intelligence, we're currently in the descriptive analytics phase. We're looking for representatives and measuring if we're hitting our KPIs, but in the end, still looking at historical data, and often it's too late to capitalize on this. So we want to move to prescriptive analytics, where it's telling you what you should do to get to that point in the future where you want to be. And when we look at the different industries and all these very successful companies, they have one thing in common. They look at forward-looking data to understand where consumers are looking and then making sure that they have the high converting products visible on these high demand dates to maximize sales and revenues. However, in the landscape, currently there is no solution that gathers more than 100 millions of data points until now. The, the challenge in the industry today is that the data points that we're looking at are mainly internal data points showing past performance. And even when we look at the future, it's based on similar periods. And for the new normal, that's not going to be enough to shape our forward-looking strategy. It will be important that revenue manager leaders start looking at top funnel demand, data in form of customer searches, dynamic concepts, booking patterns, flight data, and many more. Predicting market demand based on pre-booking data has become essential to adapting your strategy in order to, for you to stay competitive. So again, why are we not there yet? The current problem is that there is a lot of data from multiple sources. Often this data is difficult to pull and to combine into a usable format. And often systems aren't talking with each other. But more important, data isn't prescriptive. It's not telling what to make of it. But there is potential. With all these touch points left behind online, there is a possibility to understand patterns and to use these to our advantage. Pre-booking related data takes the form when the potential consumers begin to search for his next travels. And all these data points will, of course, allow us to better understand market demand and together with post-booking information, allow us to implement or adjust our strategy. The landscape is changing. Everything is happening online. And because of this, more data points are available to be analyzed. But we're not making the full use of it. There will be more competition and we'll no, no longer be competing with five or 10 competitors. We will be competing with an entire city, different accommodation types. And on top of that, trends are shifting rapidly. So no day will be the same. We can no longer assume that the past is one source of truth for the future. Everything is going to be less predictable. How we can stay competitive? It will be important that you know your guests. What is the booking journey, the lead time, the device, and where are they coming from? And who is your competition? Is your concept really static? Is it, and it will be key to know how your actual competitors uh, are and what for you're, you're competing for. It will be important to be able to identify the opportunities to beat competition. And of course, technology can help with that. It will allow you to manage data more effectively. It will reflect future demand and suggest clear actions to improve results and bring all actions together for all stakeholders. And, and now more than ever, technology will be helpful in the recovery. The lesser time spent on manual data collection, the more we can focus on the recovery. The role of a revenue manager will continuously evolve. They will need to start to look at marketing. <clears throat> they need to be informed and understand the market and be aware of all changes that the, and the impact that they will have. Know your options but also your limitations. They will need to move away from historical data analysis to plan the future and start looking at the booking intent to forecast the month. They will need to create synergy, a collaboration between different departments so that they are fully aligned on an ongoing basis. Our markets are no longer static and neither should your data be. In conclusion, there are three key takeaways. With markets getting more competitive, Properties that begin to look at predictive and upper funnel demand will stand out in performance. The role of a revenue manager is changing. These new analytics will present opportunities, not only for the revenue managers, but for all stakeholders to grow profitability, guest satisfaction scores, and employee engagement. Predictive analytics is no more a trend, but should be made a core part of your revenue management process. Thank you for your time. Um, Thank you very much for your presentation, Tal. Uh, really interesting. And I think you touched on something that I'm also going to touch upon uh, in, my, in my speech. Uh, I think there is a broader set of uh, competitors that hotels need to take into account. 
So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go over to the next speaker. Eric, please go ahead. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Uh, looking forward to the presentation today. It's um, nice to have a limit of five minutes, even though it's chopped up with 20 second intervals. Um, I mean, I'm enjoying the challenge. So ready whenever you are. It's a fact, revenue management has changed forever. And one of the biggest changes is that historical demand is no longer a reliable indicator of future demand. For example, market demand during Christmas 2019 was vastly different to Christmas 2020, and it can't be used as a basis for determining pricing. But even with the major disruption to booking traffic, such as the current pandemic, we can still drive our hotel business smoothly and efficiently. So don't panic, stay focused, good times are ahead of us, and today's technology can help us move in the right direction. It's simply a matter of having the right instruments, in this case, a revenue management system like the Libra Assistant RMS. Libra was always designed to be a different RMS with a shift towards real-time demand-centric optimization rather than an RMS with an obsolete reliance on historical booking data. Libra also handles rate shopping, online reputation analysis, and future flight search demand for your hotel destination. So this means you save time by avoiding all that manual demand data curation, and you can focus on the single most important person in our hotel lives, the hotel guest. Just like the hotel business overall and revenue management, hotel guests have also changed. But we must remain focused more than ever on optimizing the guest stay experience. And on, the only way that we can do that with less staff is by removing any operational time wasters like manual reporting or data entry. But our guests are sometimes better informed than we are about the hotel destination, like when's the best time to book? Where do I get the best deal? Or when is the ideal time to visit? But will they still follow past booking behavior when they next book? post pandemic global travel which helped enable the spread of the virus so quickly in the first place will still support travel inspiration and tourism far and wide yes flight schedules have been reduced but this is a dynamic area which we need to monitor very closely our guests have plenty of choices so be prepared hotels and hospitality are inextricably linked to the joys of travel and experiencing new cultures. That's something that will never change. But will our international guests still book their favorite destinations? And will they now book just one four week trip per year versus several shorter breaks per year? As we know, travel is currently limited by which cities or countries are opened to visitors from the traveler's home. Hopefully very soon in 2021, closed borders and quarantine travelers will become a thing of the past. Unfortunately today, these restrictions are very present and quite obviously will influence guests travel behavior. Savvy hotels will prioritize marketing to their local market right now more than ever. So guests who don't need to fly in order to visit your property and maybe live within a two hour radius of your hotel are prime targets for your marketing activities and demand generation campaigns. But whether you have five, 15, 50 or 500 competitors, it is important to understand the minutiae of your hotel market, but without wasting time manually collecting pricing data or reputation benchmarking, which of course would mean that you would lose focus on the guest experience. Revenue management has changed forever, but the importance of looking after the hotel guest hasn't. So remove any manual process that limits your ability to deliver consistently profitable hospitality and you'll be on your way to a thriving hotel operation. Your hotel needs to be a safe and amazing stay experience for each and every guest that visits, regardless of what price they paid, where they booked or how they arrived. But do you treat every single guest like a VIP or only if they have some sort of code in the PMS which flags them as special? 
We really do need our guests to feel something special from their stay each and every time, day in and day out. Amazing guest service should be a predictable outcome from our daily operations so that we maximize word of mouth and maximize positive guest sentiment. So hooray for change in revenue management and hooray for the art of hospitality. Let the Libra Assistant RMS take care of the tedium of forecast reporting and benchmarking so we can enrich our lives with meaningful guest interactions and a more profitable hotel business. And time's up. Thank you so much for that, Eric. So uh, one of the key takeaways, uh, look at the, the, the close at home guests right now, right? Absolutely. Thank you. Let's go over to our next speaker, Hortensia. Hortensia, the I'm ready scene when you are. Okay, the scene is yours. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy new year. Uh, I hope you're all in good health and ready to tackle 2021. We've already done the introduction, so I'm not gonna go over that again, but there is one thing I would like to add. 10 years and counting in this industry, and I thought I had seen it and done it all until 2020 happened. And it started out with fire in Australia, which seemed to burn everything in its way, and riots to stand for basic rights, and the virus creating panic in the Far East world, which shortly after took over the entire world, changing our lives, affecting our way of communicating, of working in every business. So now, the question is, has COVID changed revenue management forever? Let's be honest, COVID-19 was a global disaster and this pandemic has brought the hotel industries to its absolute needs. But the time has come to rise from the ashes and show what you're made of. Now is the time to, now is the time to um, um, elevate yourself. And to do that, here's a few tips of how to. In order to survive and thrive in the years to come, hotels must leverage the right balance of smart people, processes and technology and adapt quickly and smartly to change. It will still take a village to actually um, elevate your business. In a time of a crisis, it is easy to only worry about the short term. But if predictive models are forecasting a far off full recovery, how do you even maximize 2021 in the meantime? Would you rely still on your gut feel or actually um, would you put a more uh, data-driven insight into, into the mix? I know it takes a lot out of a person to challenge the status quo, especially in time of uncertainty, but have the courage to share your vision of how you want to work, be creative and look beyond just bedrooms revenue, be strategic, take it a day at a time, but think and plan ahead for and plan for further ahead. Demand no more manual rate updates, no more time consuming evaluation of competitive data, no more setting inventory and rate controls, no more spreadsheets and stale reports, no more time to waste. Just empower yourselves to focus on strategic initiatives and drive demand and optimize both pricing and availability. Look. Sentences like historical data is useless now or uh, forecasts are inaccurate are not uncommon these days. Um, some may even say revenues are coming in or we don't need revenue management right now or there's no demand to manage and so on and forth. But let's be honest, that's incredibly short-sighted from a process setting perspective. It takes a lot for an organization to find its way in uncertain times. And the hotel industry has seen this trend repeating over and over again, but still managed to come out to the other side stronger than ever. And COVID has once again taught hoteliers to be resilient, to find resources, to do more with less and still achieve profitable results. Now is an opportune time to revisit what makes your hotel unique. With limited demand, your competitive set might be your entire market. So it is important to ensure you add value, you price strategically, you invest in areas that generate demand and profit your property. You should still optimize price, forecast and operate with that in mind, whilst the technology is becoming the third pillar of the village alongside people and processes. Technology is the factor which brings it all together, people's analytical visionary strategies and the processes put in place to implement those strategies. But the technology factor makes it all happen by allowing the revenue manager to manage by exceptions, whilst 
the revenue management technology provides you with confidence in innovation, data, predictive analytics, group management, and offers you the support needed to drive the most optimal decision. A sophisticated RMS will evaluate future pace, price sensitivity, external points. But be sure of one thing, this is your time to shine. Light up your commercial strategy and start working smarter with automated data-driven decisions you can count on. It's time to elevate yourself and start thinking outside of just guests' best guests bedrooms. And get a clear view across all segments of your your business. You need to elevate from revenue management to profitable commercial success by adopting a scientific and algorithmic approach. As the industry emerges from its darkest hour, the new breed of hotel leaders hold the power to navigate the disruption and enhance productivity and optimize profit. So remove all complexity and strive to seek out the right decision for you can trust. Level up the way you work and leverage the science behind sharper forecasts and analytically based price with idea solution. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope you enjoy the presentation. And I believe the time my time is up. Thank you. Thank you so much for that also, uh, Hortensia. Now, you know that you're talking to revenue managers, right? I mean, uh, they, don't, they don't use Excel anymore then. <laughs> I hope so. I hope they don't. <laughs> so it's, it's time for our next speaker, Niels. Uh, hope you are ready. Please go Thank ahead. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Yes, I am ready. Hi, I'm Niels and I work for Sendai and we provide sales and marketing and revenue management solutions for the hospitality industry. These vary from CRM and guest interaction solutions to profit-based revenue optimization tools. Although we most likely had the toughest year for hospitality ever globally, it does look like there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're not out of, out of the woods yet, but as Sun Tzu once said, in the midst of chaos, there is opportunity and opportunities to rethink and to re-strategize are really there. And all of the opportunities that we can implement are opportunities that, we, uh, th that change the way we work. So since 2008, we've seen a continuous growth in the hospitality world, and we mainly had to manage business that was coming in. So now we suddenly have to start searching for business and we have to become really creative in the way we search. Traditionally, it almost felt comfortable to have a conflict. Uh, and marketing and sales were uh, departments that we used to have conflicts with, uh, with sales about the business to take and with marketing about wrong promotions. Coming out of 2020, it's clear that departmental walls have to be broken down and departments have to come together. Following COVID, owners and investors, investors will be looking for returns as soon as possible. But ADR, RevPAR and RGI are just numbers and they will be far more interested in things like EBITDA and net profit. So that means we'll need to shift our focus from setting the right rate strategy to targeting the right guests that are likely to be the most profitable for us. So in order to find those guests, you will need to dig into your systems as you need to understand which type of guests are more, li more likely to be most profitable for you. So you will need to find ways of group grouping your guests and new ways to reach out to them. So it's crucial that you make sure that all your systems work in unison. It also means that as departments, we need to work closely together and as close as possible. That might need to change the way we incentivize them. We generally have very different incentive schemes for each department, and it's time to start aligning these schemes so they're no longer conflicted and that we encourage departments to work as one towards one common goal. The problem with the current crisis is that it's very unclear what the future holds, and we're waiting for signals from the market. That means that there are very few external signal, signals that we can use, so historic data is the only current data that we know is accurate. Yes, the future will be different, but it's better to use data that you have than using no data at all. So you need to start looking at what data you have in your systems. Try to identify those guests that you believe will come back once we go back to relative normality. You need to start creating plans on how to reach out to these people and how to entice them come back, to come back to stay with you. 
The problem, of course, is that you, you don't have a lot of sources, uh, but in your hotel, you have the PMS, you have your sales and catering systems, your spa systems. So if you have a CRM, you, that can be very useful because you can consolidate all of that data into a single source of truth. So it becomes much easier to uh, segment your guests based on um, you know, the audiences and reach out to them as soon as the time is right. We know that retaining guests is cost you less than acquiring new guests. And in fact, we know that loyalty club members book 40% higher ADR, 80, stay 81% more often and spend 164% more than non-members. So retaining those guests is key. Although pricing is important, it's even more important that you uh, stay, reach out to your guests and let them know that you will keep them safe. And the best way to do this is personalizing your communication as much as possible. This also means that it's critical that a revenue manager communicates with what business is needed and when it's needed, and that you, uh, there is enough demand when promotions and packages are uh, put out. So you need to recognize the book booking trends, understand where your opportunities exist, and quickly diagnose where gaps and segments, uh, gaps are in segment, channel, and market level. Another very important measure is that you have to be ready for every scenario. For every month, you should have different scenarios prepared with actions you will take for the, each of those. No business starting, uh, business is starting to come back slowly. Business is coming back much faster than anticipated. So have a scenario for each of those situations. You don't need to scramble last minute. So ideally, you need to work together on a daily basis with a whole commercial team to ensure that you're ready for what is to come. Meet weekly or even daily as we nav navigate a still very uncertain 2021. Ensure you adapt your plans and strategies and change them as soon as you need them. Plan for all scenarios and be prepared to be uh, adaptable. So the role of revenue manager has changed from that of a gatekeeper to that of a more well-rounded commercial leader. So thanks a lot and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much for that, Niels. Really interesting. And I think we took away a few of my points. Uh, <laughs> and Sorry there, about that. that. That always is the, 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 the disadvantage of being last, right? So let me then go ahead. My name is Anna-Marie Kubanski and I'm founder and CEO of Taxicon, offering outsourcing, mentoring programs, trainings and audits. Furthermore, we offer a revenue management system and a distribution power, a platform powered by Windsurfer. Our customers consist of different types of properties in different types of areas in Europe. And for the coming five minutes, I will use our experience blended with Tacticon's experience uh, at our outsourcing projects. The revenue management role has, evo has evolved over the past 20 years I have been revenue manager. In the beginning, pricing was quite static. We used rack rates and seasonable rates. Internet came into our lives and changed it all. Pricing became more transparent. Bar were, rates were introduced. Distribution costs increased rapidly when the mix of distribution platforms changed and the more expensive OTA channels got a larger piece of the pie. At that point, we were still in a time of recession and very happy with a new set of channels. And at the same time, we were trying to get control over our rates, which resulted in rate parity agreements. The cost of distribution became a topic when we started to understand that these costs in increased faster than our total revenue. Margins slimmed and we needed to do something. So from revenue managers solely be being responsible for revenue streams, we now had to understand and control the costs involved to it. Cost of sales became a topic. For hotel chains, it meant that they had to break the silos and have all commercial departments work more closely together. No longer could a revenue manager not know anything about digital marketing. And for independent hotels, it meant that they had to invest time in more knowledge about distribution and digital marketing. Now that was all before pandemic changed the world. Currently we see that the revenue comes from leisure individuals and these have to compensate for the lost revenue of revenue no longer coming from corporate travel. We should get the most out of these leisure travels, and that means that revenue managers need to rethink their strategies. In order to attract these leisure, leisure, leisure travelers, we might want to see if our market segmentation is still valid. Instead of going for leisure group and leisure individual, we could use generational segments such as millennials, Gen X and baby boomers, and understand each of these segments price sensitivity and customer journey. 
What do they want? What are they willing to pay for it? And what distribution platforms do they use? And when do they make that decision? This means a more detailed understanding of our customers and also a more detailed form of revenue management as all these different types of customers want different things. And all these things have a price tag that can be optimized. So from room rate pricing, revenue managers go over to product pricing, where every individual room type, conference or treatment room and restaurant dish will be optimized. That leads us to the question of total revenue management. For years we have been talking about this, but far, so far very little has happened. A lot of hotels have other products such as restaurants, mini bars and rentals. Why not make these more profitable? Once more, we're coming back to a breaking of silos and have all departments work together. In our total revenue project, projects, this has been the most difficult part, either with the agreement that our guests are never going to understand that, or simply because of this fear of change that most of us humans beings have. We like to keep things the way they are and learning new tricks puts us out of our comfort zone. A revenue management actually becomes more time consuming and this in a time when revenue management roles have been terminated with the agreement that well, we have nothing to revenue manage. On the contrary, at Tacticon we increase market share for the hotels we help with outsource revenue management and I'm sure that this also counts for all hotels that have an excellent revenue manager. So the three points I'm trying to make here is change your segment, uh, customer segmentation from the traditional leisure individual or leisure group to generational, uh, to generational segmentation such as millennial, Gen X and Gen Z. Understand their needs and customer journey and adapt your strategy accordingly. Go from room revenue to product revenue. Get started with total revenue management and start applying revenue management on all departments. And this means that you also need to have an understanding to the cost involved in all the products you sell. Well, almost automatically you find yourself implementing profit management and revenue managers will, be, will become profit managers. And for that, we need to break the silos and have all departments work together. Revenue management, marketing, sales, but also the operational departments and finance. Believe me, our guests are going to understand and change this might, the, the change this might bring. We all have goldfish memory, which is a good thing because it also makes us travel as soon as we feel that we can. And this actually is already my end of my five minutes of fame. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything I mentioned on, on anything I mentioned the past minutes, if, or if you want to get an excellent revenue manager yourself, just contact me. And remember, hotels need to have a revenue manager if they want to eject themselves out of this situation. Well, so far so good. Listeners, you have no idea how nerve wracking this is. Um, but having my Pecha Kutia behind me, maybe I can start just like with uh, asking some questions to our special guest, Aida Munoz. Here I am. Hi, Aida. Hi. I am, I am uh, shot with the perfect timing we, we are going through. I mean, it's incredible. So really, really well done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let maybe uh, we can we can start with uh, asking you. Could you could you introduce yourself? Maybe a little a little bit uh, take a little bit more time in your introduction, and also say what does HIP do? Sure. Yeah. Well, glad to introduce myself. Um, so Aida, having worked in revenue management for quite a long time now, it's like 10, 12 years. Started my career in England, so I was based in London for quite a good number of, of years, starting. Since the uh, very beginning in a very plain role, first of all, revenue analyst and executive, then I became revenue manager. And then uh, finally I was um, promoted to regional director for, for the UK, looking after three big properties at Melia, the company I used to work for uh, had in, in England. Then I moved to the global corporate office here in, uh, in Spain, they have uh, the, the big office uh, headquarters in Palma de Mallorca. I don't know if you've ever been here, otherwise I recommend it uh, to you. Uh, and I was overseeing the global revenue operations across the whole portfolio, which was about 200, sorry, 275, 300 hotels worldwide, so traveling a lot and understanding how could do better revenue performance, looking at total revenue and introducing new tools and ways to operate. Um, then I moved finally after 10 years of working for Melia to HIP is a completely different business. 
regard, I mean, it's uh, within the hospitality is uh, the, opposite, the opposite side. In Melia, we operated hotels. At HIP, we own hotels. And then we asked some of the big uh, hotel operators to, to manage our hotels. Uh, here in Spain, there are big chains, as you may know, like uh, Melia or Barcelo or uh, Iberostar, even uh, Ritz Carlton or AC Marriott. Uh, so they operate our, our hotels. And my role is mainly based on overseeing that the revenue management that they all do is focused on maximizing profitability. So I oversee the operation of, of all of them. It sounds like a lot. I, I try to be um, very cautious when I say all of them because we have 65 hotels and it's very difficult to look after all of them at the same time. Wow. But it's, this is how we do. So we buy hotels, we refurb the hotels, we, we put them up to date, and then we restart the operation of those hotels to, to make sure that we get the, the ROI or the return on the investment made on those properties. Interesting. So um, you have a lot of experience then to give us. So if we can start with, with what, what has changed for you during the past months? Do you still have the same tasks now as 12 months before? What, what, what is the difference? Yeah, well, me, me person, personally, yes, my role is quite a different thing because my main focus is to define the strategy for those hotels that we are going to refurbish. So it's a very different uh, point of view or way of working against a normal revenue manager or revenue director in a, in a hotel management company, right? So I wanted to highlight some of the things that highlight, sorry, some of the things that I've uh, seen around these last few months, so I wanted to share with you uh, what, what are the impacts on, on all the other different operators. Yeah, so I would like mm -hmm. to to highlight first of all the the immense creativity that I've seen around. You know, I'm very happy about how COVID has pushed for a faster development in terms of strategies, tactics, technology, digitalization, some. Um, topics that before for some of the hotels have been kept under the table because they were not considered as relevant as, as they are before. I don't know um, if you've seen this this uh, as well with, within your clients, and marie but I, I think this is quite interesting. I mean, to give you an idea about what I'm saying, uh, I would like to explain that I, I work normally, most of the hotels I'm looking after are holiday resorts here in Southern Europe. Spain, Portugal, Greece, and so on. And most of them used to have, until the COVID moment, a lot of tour operators share on their, on their business mix. Well, at this moment, or nowadays, these tour operators are not there anymore. You know, Thomas Cook broke up, well, broke up, stopped operating, and some of the biggest uh, European operators, such as TUI or J2, are, are struggling to get business because there is no demand for that. So um, these open the door for those hotels here in Southern, uh, in Southern Europe to open to other distribution channels that they were not focusing before, at least that much. And this is not only uh, OTA business because everybody have uh, kind of some presence on booking.com or Expedia and so, and so on. But they had to also rethink about their own distribution channels. So their own websites, their own um, contact centers, and so on, because they were so confident that tour operators would bring all the business that they needed that they didn't spend a single penny in, into that side of, of the business. It sounds weird, and probably people from Northern Europe, uh, cities like London, Paris, or whoever in Germany might think this is crazy, but I mean, let, let's, let's make clear that the resort holiday destinations are still very very tour operator oriented because the tour operators are the ones who who have the the early or the plane the plane seats capacity so they are kind of forced to work with them in order to bring clients over yeah, yeah, yeah. that that that's you uh, is is a bit different in the northern part of europe yeah. where we actually uh, started to 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 move away from from tour operators actually what we what we discuss a lot in this uh, in the office here is 
our tour operators may be coming back now in a future because yeah okay demand is is lowering they're very 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 good on on talking about like uh, our fear of not selling a room that's what they keep on telling you like live, give me a, a, a low rate and uh, i will fill up your rooms but also like uh, will will our travelers maybe start uh, going back to 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 travel agencies again because that feels safer that's actually an interesting yeah. to see in the future yeah absolutely now um regarding the revenue manager role doesn't matter whether it is Northern or Southern Europe. Um, I mean, the, the question is about, has it changed? Well, so my answer is that I really have mixed feelings about it. I mean, has it changed? Mm, not so sure. I mean, if we think of the revenue manager's job description by itself, I tend to believe that, I tend to believe, sorry, that the regular tasks ha have not changed much. I mean, market review, pricing tactics, distribution, all this is something that we used to do in the past and we need to do now and we will probably have to do it in the future. Then what, what it's changed, I believe, and I'm sorry to say this is a very personal opinion and probably we can discuss further after, after my answers, mm -hmm. um, is that probably the time that we spend for the topics defined on the job description is where it has really changed. I don't know, let me put an example. Let's say market review, for example, yeah? In normal years or pre-COVID, revenue managers could anticipate more or less the consumer behavior. They knew what was gonna happen more or less. And this was not exactly year over year, but more or less it was a repetitive pattern, right? Nowadays, the task is different is being basically fully aware of what is happening on each of the of the feeder markets that are coming to to our hotels what is the evolution of covid evolution of the number of cases how is the, the feeder market doing with vaccinations and whatever else may impact the demand i believe so perhaps before it was much less time on market review and now it's much more because we need to be aware of what's happening because we don't know anything about what's going to happen next. So this is probably taking way longer, as, as I was saying. Um, and now, I, I don't know, we need to be aware of uh, seasonality, booking trends, pace, but the truth is that we don't know anything, what's going to happen. So we need to be aware of the market situation of each of the different feeder markets that might come to our properties to react much faster to any change on those patterns and being ahead of our competitors to make sure that, that we capture all the demand that is coming to our hotels, which is, I have to say, very, very limited at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So, so other, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go, 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 go ahead, I thought you were ready. <laughs> I, wanted to, I, I wanted to highlight an, another of the topics that is being discussed lately, well, not, not lately, during the, the full COVID uh, time, let's say full 2020, to, to be specific, is forecasting, yeah? I believe now, and again, this is another personal opinion, correct me from from wrong, please. Forecasting has become, from my point of view, something unnecessary. I mean, I don't believe forecasting is required nowadays. Without booking patterns, without data from, from the competition, comparisons, impossible to be done against other time periods in the past it is almost impossible to achieve certain accuracy on forecasting nobody knows nobody um, understands clearly what's going to happen so I, I read the forecast that some of the big companies have been able to to do or been, or willing to do i don't know it's difficult to understand why they did but everything seems quite unclear and and the question would be, what, why are you going to forecast? What for if you don't know what's going to be the business demand, the patterns or anything? So will business as usual for hotels in 2021, 23, um, tomorrow um, or, or anytime um, come back? Who knows? Yeah. So if we cannot anticipate, how are we going to forecast? No, I don't know. This is, a, this is one of, of my thoughts. So the truth is that I've seen some of the hotel operators that decided not to budget for 2021. And I agree with that. Um, expenses in a normal year are based on the revenues that you're gonna make. In this case, they all consider to keep the fixed costs as they had to. 
and then the variable are gonna are gonna be depending on on the demand obviously but they are not clear about what's gonna happen so they prefer to be a little conservative on on this and and not make big bets on what's gonna happen on 2021 interesting uh, oh, sorry yeah so um i don't know perhaps you do you have another question? Or because I have a lot to speak to you, Ernest. I really want to share uh, what, what I'm, I'm, what I've been learning this year. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, we have received some interesting questions from 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 our uh, listeners as well. But please uh, make your point. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So no, I just had some some notes here, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't for I didn't forget anything that I wanted to share. So now I wanted to I wanted to explain to you a, a little bit what regarding budgeting and forecasting and the experience. This week, for example, in, in my own company at HIP, we are preparing a budget for 2021. And the discussion is first, what for? And second, how much are we going to say that we are going to make? Obviously, we, we report to many other stakeholders. So we have a parent company, which is Blackstone, and we need to explain what our expectations are. But we are really hesitate, hesitating and, and, and doubting what to do. This, this is the case, for example, the, the same situation for uh, the, the winter sun destinations that we have here in Spain and, and in the Caribbean as well, it happens the same. You know, the Canary Islands are uh, summer for the 365 year, years on, on the uh, day, sorry, on the, on the years. Uh, and the Canaries and also, again, sorry, the Caribbean, even Southeast Asia, they were expecting a decent good recovery for Christmas and Q1 2021. So what, what happened? Uh, a new wave of COVID, the famous third wave that is kicking all Europe, or well, all the whole world, but I want to focus on, on Europe, um, made, made all the plans go against expectations, you know? So Christmas failed completely, a lot of cancellations and Q1, is not looking very good at all, despite having thought at the beginning of, of uh, December that that the the season would be more more or less good. So then, whoever did a forecast for that period probably failed and ended up losing time preparing all those forecasts and reports because at the end nothing happened and the market went crazy again. So my my point here is why do we need to prepare on what the future is going to bring over if we don't really know anything about what the future is going to be like? So I don't know. This is one of the things I would like to bring on the on the table and perhaps we can we can discuss and Marie. Yeah, well, maybe we can we can ask the, the, the um, experts in the panel this this question. Uh, maybe especially then the ones that have revenue management system, but uh, actually all of you, it's like, what, what do you think about forecasting? Uh, your systems base their forecast on, on something. What, 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 what is your feeling? Just yeah, maybe I'll start with that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I completely agree with Ida, even though I haven't actually thought about it so clearly in terms of why are you forecasting? Why bother? I, I haven't had that thought, but... But when Ida mentioned it, I was like, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> Why are you spending so much time? Like, like especially right now. So um, this is, let, let me answer it this way. When we speak to hotels uh, and we speak about technology, we always try and put our solution in terms of what, obviously what problem we fix or what questions we answer. Now, no matter where the hotel is located, the hotel GM or the hotel owner will be asking the revenue manager, when do you think business will pick up? When will things pick up? Sure. They may word it 10 different ways, but the question is, when will things pick up? Now, um, from, from, a, from now speaking from, from Libra's perspective, that was the, um, catalyst that was the trigger for us to rethink our tool specifically on flight search demand data because I'm not going into a big spiel just now but we wanted the hotelier to be able to at least answer and say well actually this is unusual but but uh, Germany France 
and, and Spain markets are all doing a lot of search into our destination right now. They don't normally search this time of year, but this is the trend we're seeing in the last seven days or the last 30 days, blah, 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 blah. In other words, what I, my, my thinking, if we agree that the um, power or value of a forecast today is really reduced, if we then think that, well, what's the next step? We need to think about demand generation or targeted marketing efforts where there is demand um, still to come. And we believe um, in a lot of cases, people will be fly, um, searching for their flights, booking their flights immediately before booking their hotel, even though may have, they may have researched both at the same time. So I, I agree with Ida. Yeah. I, I may have another question. This also came up in, 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 in the uh, questions and answers from, from, from the people listening. Like okay, what what why why did um, why is it so that revenue managers actually almost immediately are the ones that that disappear? I mean, why do people think why don't they understand revenue management enough? So what, why is the role changing? Why are we being executed out of our out of our roles? Do you have an idea about that? Can I'll take I? this one. Um, and yeah, I'll, yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. yeah. No, I, I think you know it's 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 very easy because. Uh, you know, when there's no demand, they people immediately say, "Oh, well, the revenue manager is not adding any adding any value here," which is you know completely incorrect, of course. Uh, yes, uh, the short term, uh, there's there's nothing they can do about bringing back demand, but on the other hand, you know, one of the things that that Ida already mentioned is, you know, the, the the forecasting. I don't believe that forecasting is the right thing to do. However, what I do think is important to do is have strategies ready. And, and as I mentioned in my presentation, I think a revenue manager should constantly be looking at, okay, what kind of strategies are we putting in place for different scenarios? And that scenario planning becomes far more important than actually actual uh, forecasting so if you know it is lower than i expected uh, my demand is lower than i expected uh, if it's on par with what i expect and if it's higher than what i expect you know that is is you know you need to have strategies ready for what you want to do in those different situations yeah. so uh, yeah yeah um, I, Marie, sorry, if sorry. i can add on to that um as well um, I think also the revenue manager's role is seen purely as a tactical role. Do the spreadsheets, crunch the numbers, make sure the GM and the stakeholders have the KPIs. But we often forget that actually the revenue manager is the core of the business, is the strategist. He or she needs to be empowered to actually, you know, leverage their skills and, and, and bring bring the revenue in, generate that demand, work alongside other teams within, um, within the business to actually create that strategy and that kind of forward-looking strategy. Because yes, it is a very, very unusual situation that we are, we, we're all in at the moment, but this is not the normal. This is the current normal, but it will not be in I don't know, 18 months, 12 months, six months. We don't know, we still live in a very uncertain time. We don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. We might all get vaccinated and all this virus might go away or not. I'm not living also in a, in a, in a crazy world either. But at the same time, we need to be prepared. And if we don't have that strategies there, if we don't have that powerful person, um, to work alongside the right strategies, the right processes and the right technology, we might be missing out a lot in here. And I think yeah. that's that's my take. Thank you. Yeah, I think, uh, while we're at it, there's another question I thought maybe I can ask you. It's like uh, with the change of revenue management approach, don't you think that um, uh, at this moment, revenue managers should be incorporated in the marketing department? Do you have do you have a feeling about that one? If you, yeah. Sorry, if, were you asking me or just the panelists in general, sorry? Yeah. I thought, well, maybe now you're talking, but then maybe one of the other panelists have a, have a, have a strong feeling sure. about that. I'll leave it to somebody else then. Thank you. I think it should be, um, I think it should be a synergy between different departments. I think it's really important that uh, as well that are aligned all these, uh, these, these departments. But next to that as well, if we speak about strategies and how to implement them, I think the current challenge um, often when we are looking at forecasting or implementing strategy, a lot of 
of, of hotels are looking at indeed historical data, uh, maybe historical uh, benchmarking data, but currently, and I think yeah, now more than ever, it's really not telling us uh, what we want to know. And I think there we need to step away to more uh, and look more at top funnel demand, rather like looking at the booking intent, where and when people are searching and um, try to capture that. And I think it will allow as well, uh, and I think I agree, Eric already mentioned, looking at, for example, flight searches, but uh, there are so much data points out there and it's super interesting and super exciting, um, but as well, of course, challenging. Yeah. Now, then Marie, maybe I can add to that, because I think, you know, I, I, t I totally believe that the departments need to be integrated. I think they need there needs to be more synergy between the departments. However, I think they need to be under one umbrella with different specialists within the team. So you have your specialists, but you all work together towards one common goal. And I think having that commercial leader, like, you know, a lot of the, the big chains have it now, uh, and then having marketing specialists, distribution specialists, revenue management specialists sitting underneath that, that all work towards this common goal. One thing that uh, Tal and, and Eric mentioned, you know, external data, one thing that I always find, diff you know, dangerous with external data is, is you know, um, there has been a lot of indication of search going on, but then a next, you know, uh, COVID incident happens again and the, you know, conditions change completely and suddenly all of that data is out the window. So I think it is very dangerous to currently start working on revenue management strategies. And, and I think pricing at the moment, there was a, uh, there was a question about pricing in, in the questions and, you know, how do we increase pricing? I think at the moment we shouldn't drop rates uh, as a hotelier you shouldn't drop rates people are not booking people that want to book will pay whatever price they they feel is is uh, good that will make them safe and i think you know that instilling that feeling of safety is far more important at the moment than pricing you know you can drop your rate to to, to 10 euros but if a guest doesn't feel safe at your hotel and probably that dropping that rate to 10 euros is actually going to make them feel less safe rather than more safe. Mm -hmm. um, and also that dropping your rates will actually attract a different kind of guest than you would expect. So, you know, there's a whole thing, there's, there's a lot about the pricing. So my advice is always, you know, think about your messaging rather than your pricing in this stage, because at the moment price is not going to drive demand. No. I totally agree. I mean, uh, we are almost at the end of the uh, webinar, but we got a very interesting question also about like, okay, total revenue management, of course. I mean, uh, my point was, it's taken us a long time for, for us to incorporate, but why, why are we not working that way yet? Why are we still just like focusing on room only? Do you have maybe an idea about that? Well, uh, I can say technology is one of the biggest challenges or hurdles that we have in, in terms of achieving total revenue management, total revenue performance. It's very difficult to uh, break down and dig in, in, in uh, about the TREF4. You know, we are very used to work with ADR, but TREF4 is one of those KPIs that it's always been there where we are not focusing on it that much and we are not able to break it down in terms of how much is room revenue, pretty clear for everybody, but then how much is F&B package revenue in terms of a board, for example, and what is F&B generation within clients at their hotel without having pre-booked it. Um, yeah. Other expenses, spa parking, other revenues in general is not something that hotels are used to analyze in a, in a deeper way. And I think we are all starting to focus much more on this, but I have, my doubts about everybody doing it at the moment. Do, do you think it's a, it's, it's a technology issue? Uh, maybe our property management systems don't give us the answers that we need or... Um... Yeah, well, there are very little RMSs nowadays that are looking at, at TREF4 instead of ADR. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure if any actually does it at the level that revenue managers would require in order to develop TREF4. So I would say technology is definitely one of the one of the topics but then also i believe revenue management is something that it's been traditionally developed in urban hotels well in urban hotels room revenue is the biggest share aside whether you may have a good restaurant and you you can do 
good F&B revenues. But in general terms, room revenue is the biggest revenue contributor to the mix. Therefore, yeah. revenue management systems have been focused to support urban hotels and then destination resort hotels. And I'm talking by, about my, my own experience, travel to work with RMSs because there is a huge part of the revenue contribution that is not being analyzed by the RMS itself. So definitely it is an issue technology. Thank you. So, Thank sorry you to much. interrupt again. But I feel that, that I'm talking too much, but I, I just wanted to say, you know, with, with Rainmaker, with our product, revenue management product, we actually define 10 different revenue categories and define profitability for each of those revenue categories. So the optimization is done on profitability on revenue category, on room type, as well as on channel. So, you know, we look at all of those factors when we do the revenue optimization. So it's not technology, it's, it's uh, systems that, that don't do it. Yeah, we uh, also provide a revenue management system. Actually, I mean, our system just, just can apply it, but then usually our, our main issue is with the information that we get from the, uh, from the, from the, from the PMSs, mm. uh, that down. But thank you very much. There are a few questions uh, in, in the chat. Thank you all for your, um, uh, for, 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 your, uh, for your questions. Unfortunately, we don't have time anymore, uh, but please send us an email. Um, after after the, the this webinar, there's a few points that I would like to make in. Um, yeah, Marie, uh, just one thing. Okay, sorry. After that slide, you have all our email addresses, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. As I said, I really hope you enjoyed this webinar. Uh, the next one is on the fourth of February, uh, so the first Thursday of February. And we're going to talk about how to find technology that, that fits your needs. Uh, we've invited speakers from, from Roomdex, HQ Revenue, uh, Revenue, Guest Joy, but also Clock PMS is coming to join us. A special guest at that moment will be Nina Kalian from Elite Hotels that actually have uh, has been looking at the technology needs of, of, the, of the chain. So we are recording this webinar and I will send an email to all the people listening and, 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 and registering for the, this webinar afterwards. Um, one thing that I promised to talk to you, to you about, well, the 18th of May, this is the event of the year, a revenue management event that's held simultaneously in Stockholm, London, Milan and online. It's a whole day event, so you can either participate on site or look at the online um, sessions that we're going, to, we're going to show you. Please hold the date and uh, I will send you the link for, for this event. Now, finally, yes, um, the contact details, but I, maybe I want to ask all of you to, maybe do you have like a final comment to our participants? Tell maybe, would you like to start? Um, yeah, I think it will be important um, for, for the for for uh, the hotels to look at forward-looking data and uh, be able to really look at dynamic data, real-time data, to be able to adjust their strategy. And of course, yeah, good luck to everyone. Um, let me know if you have any questions about my presentation. Um, you have my contact details here, so feel free to reach out. Thank you for that, Tal. Eric. Yes, thanks again. I, I thought this was really very really well organized and incredibly timely. You know, we, these things sometimes drag on way too long, but I found it really interesting, really informative. Um, from my perspective, I think each of the speakers has mentioned data, if not once, then 10 times during their presentations. And from my perspective, it's uh, you hear the expression data is the new oil. And we really look at data like, like quality data. Um, dynamic data. So for example, flight schedules, not looking at it and then next month checking it again. No, those flight schedules are updated dynamically daily. It's, it's important that we treat that data as an important source of, of information for the systems to then act upon so that you don't have to study everything. But we're always adding new data sources. Um, I'm not going to speak about the next edition of data source that's coming out very shortly on February 9th, but my email address is there. Get in touch, keep in touch, and always happy to talk hotel tech. I know you do, thank you for that. Hortensia? Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Anne-Marie, for such great event. As always, um, you are a superstar, and thank you for inviting me and having me over to 
to sit in this panel and to embarrass myself during the Pecha Kucha, but that's a different story. Um, as for the panelists, thank you very much for sitting with us for, for this hour and listening to, to all we had to say. I think the revenue management topic um, is such a broad topic and we can sit here and we can we can discuss all all the way till tomorrow morning and we'll still not be done and yes i think data is is at the core of everything and strategy and and looking ahead and not dragging the price down and keep forecasting and keep trying to get the best profitable result for your business going back as well to data is always good to keep in mind that in mind that data is as good as is relevant um, and when you look to forecast and to price and to strategize about your um, your your business just just make sure that you have a clear view of what you're looking at and what you want to achieve and with that i think i, I i'd like again to thank you again and, and 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 yeah i hope to i hope you'll be in touch you have my contacts in there and if you need anything from me or have any questions i'll be happy to help thank you yeah, it was our pleasure was ours thank you very much Niels. do you have anything to add there Yes, of course, I have been, something to add. Thank you very much, Anna Marie, and thank you very much, all the other panelists. Uh, it's, uh, it was a great session, I think. Uh, uh, very informative, uh, some great stuff, also from Aida. Uh, that was uh, really, really great to hear from your perspective. Um, for me, I think, you know, data we've mentioned, but one thing I think we should always keep in mind as hoteliers, you know, your guests are the most important, you know, without your guests, you wouldn't achieve revenue. So, you know, at the moment, in my view, the most important thing is reaching out to your guests and ensuring that you convey to them that they will be safe. And uh, pricing and and forecasting yes of course you need to do it but the most important thing is be ready for when your guest is 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 coming back and as Amory already said you know we have very short time uh, or uh, short-term memory as human beings so you know the new normal will be uh, the old normal before we know it we saw it in in all of the other crises that we've been through uh, so hopefully we will see that coming sooner rather than later the vaccinations are are you know going full blast ahead so yes there will be disparity in within europe where countries will you know be earlier than other countries but at the same time you know we should see uh, travel coming back uh, uh, sooner rather than later. So that's uh, what I'm looking forward to seeing. So thank you very much and uh, reach out whenever you want. Thank you for that news. Yeah, actually, I, I couldn't agree more what we see between the so between the two waves, especially I mean, uh, we we are based in Stockholm where, where regulations have been different than uh, than the other parts of Europe. And we see actually quite quickly we saw after the first wave that travel was coming back and this is also my, my my point we have goldfish memory and as soon as we start to feel positive again as soon as we start traveling again at least the leisure travels we are expecting that that it will come back quite soon but then i'm i'm, I'm sometimes also over positive <laughs> and with that i'd also like to say well okay you've sold your own i mean if you if you survive this there's nothing in the world that can break you down afterwards so please 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 um hope that this situation is going to be over soon but stick to it uh, make a plan um a long-term plan and, and 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 keep to that with that i leave the final words to aida so uh I was thinking re revenue managers are data driven persons, people, they, they are, uh, they, they believe they're no one without data, without numbers, without behaviors, patterns. Nowadays, this is not the case. We don't know what's going to happen next, but I would advise everyone, if I may, is to be patient and just be sure that they are ahead of the market in terms of online reputation, content on their channels, on the third party channels and everywhere. Make some noise because when the demand is going to come back, I think it's going to come back very, very strongly. So be ready because uh, I'm really looking forward to business coming back and, and I hope everybody else is getting ready for that. And uh, last but not least, Anne-Marie and the rest of the team, thank you very much for having me. It's been a real pleasure sharing this time with you all. And I hope we're going to have another one in the future. 
Well, this is held on a monthly basis, but I'm certainly uh, going to invite you on one of the, the, the future. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you everyone that has been listening and have been so active in, in, in asking questions. Sorry, we couldn't answer them all. But as said, you have our email addresses and you're always free to, to ask us anything. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope you will be joining us also on the 4th of February. All. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wow.